This episode of Transal Tactics is proudly presented by Gordon Food Service. Welcome to Trestle Tactics, a tips from Trestle Short. We wanted to know what's going to make our podcasts more valuable to you. And the answers were simple. You want easy to implement tactics and strategies that will let you create an outstanding experience around your senior living food and hospitality programming. So let's dive in right now on today's Trestle Tactics. Welcome into Trestle Tactics. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about tips and tricks that you can use when selecting and purchasing your commercial kitchen equipment. Whether you're doing a brand new build, a renovation of your kitchen, or just looking to replace that old refrigerator or fryer that's seen better days, Kevin Berg from Clark Pro is going to share with us a few tips and tricks that he uses with his customers to help them have really great success. Take it away, Kevin. Hi, I'm Kevin Berg from Clark Pro, uh, and here are a few tips when purchasing kitchen equipment to help ensure you buy what actually best suits your operation. First thing, obviously, is the cost. Everyone is rightly concerned about the price on any piece of equipment you're looking to purchase, and there is such a wide range of price points for any type of equipment nowadays. You know, with the, with the, the breadth of manufacturers that are out there, you can get everything from a very inexpensive entry-level price point piece of equipment or something all the way up to like the Rolls-Royce uh, of that category of equipment that could be, you know, 10 to 12 times as expensive as the entry, entry-level entry model. If something is going to be one of the main workhorses of your kitchen, we would typically direct you towards mid-range to higher range options. While if something is going to be a lesser used piece on your line, only occasionally used, uh, something that's just getting light duty, we would definitely suggest uh, that you lean more towards something with fewer bells and whistles, something more towards the price point end of things. Uh, no reason to overspend if you don't need to. Uh, another consideration is power and utilities. Whatever equipment you purchase, of course, needs to be compatible with your building's existing utilities. This sounds silly to mention, but I promise you at least once a week, we see a customer purchase a very expensive piece of equipment with the wrong utilities, which they then have to return. That can be really frustrating and time-consuming and, frankly, costly uh, because a lot of this equipment is made to order. Uh, they don't like to get things returned, so they charge a hefty restocking fee, and we do whatever we can to avoid all those things, but it does happen. So with that in mind, uh, we need to know uh, from your end of things, you know, if it's an electric piece of equipment, voltage, phase, wattage, amperage, stuff like that. Uh, whether it's natural gas or liquid propane, whether or not you have relevant drain locations. And, and those things are all, it's not necessarily the easiest uh, information to find. So what we suggest for all of our customers is the best practice is always to snap a picture of what they call the rating plate or the serial plate, uh, and then forward that to your account manager or salesperson. And they can then backtrack. They can always interpret that tag and make sure that, that they're connecting you with pieces of equipment that match your building supply. Also, we've had many, we've had many amusing stories of people that have blown up equipment, not, not dangerously, but you know, fried equipment by connecting a 120 ice machine to a 240 circuit, for example, all kinds of crazy things, you know, liquid propane fryers connected to natural gas supply and vice versa. That creates like a flamethrower effect, short version. Make sure we match power and utilities. Uh, sustainability and efficiency is another thing to keep in mind. Most of the cook, most cooking equipment is just gotten more and more efficient as the technology has progressed. So that's, in, that's led to increased fuel efficiency, increased output, all, all kinds of lovely things like that. Uh, and whether you want to or not, you may be forced to be considering uh, Energy Star certification and energy efficiency as many state governments are now requiring any new equipment be certified to some degree or another. There's nothing quite like taste to take you home. When flavors bring you back to county fairs and sweetness incites stories of fresh fruits and farmer's markets. Whether it's the bold notes of a big city, <laughs> or the rich profile of a coastal getaway. 
Gordon Choice Regional Favorites taste like home. This is another thought that seems, that might seem a little bit silly to mention, but in terms of picking equipment, functionality. Simply stated, is the piece of equipment you're considering actually capable of doing what you want it to do? For example, if you are trying to knock out a high volume of pizza in a short time, for example, if you're going to feed a crowd quickly, maybe a traditional deck oven is not the way to go. Maybe an impinger oven, a conveyor oven would be the way to go. That also could lead to increased efficiency in terms of production, as well as just throughput. And lastly, one of the other ones to consider would be durability, total cost of ownership or warranty. You know, this one seems obvious and it's not really a surprise to anyone, but yes, of course, the, the inexpensive off-brand oven might look great now when your budget is low for the month, but what kind of warranty does it have? And how does that warranty compare with some of the other more prominent manufacturers or models in the market? You know, there, there's been somewhat of an arms race with refrigeration companies on their warranty over the last 10 years, where when I started selling equipment, it was a two-year warranty, then it was a five-year warranty. And now a couple of these major manufacturers are up to a seven-year warranty. I can guarantee you that the entry-level model does not have a seven-year warranty. So, you know, you could replace it three or four times in the same time as that one warranty might cover if you go with the cheapest one. So will it inevitably cost you more over the lifetime uh, to maintain and repair the cheaper one versus spending a little bit more upfront and getting the benefit of the extended warranty and improved service and all that sort of stuff? And those are my thoughts on making sure that you select the appropriate equipment for your operation. Thanks, Kevin. Hopefully you guys out there will find great benefit in these tips and tricks that Kevin provided when you go out to purchase your next big item for your kitchen. Thanks for joining us today on Trestle Tactics, and we'll see you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Trestle Tactics. Be sure to like and subscribe on any of our channels, YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you listen to us. Also, be sure to follow us on any of your social media channels at Tips from Trestle. Well, thanks for joining us on this episode of Trestle Tactics.